I'm in the trenches with my rifle, do rag for the title. Dear tag in the clouds, make you question the Bible. This deadly podcast will make you threaten your rivals. Drew Montana and I am my lead, straight finessing your idols. Okay, cool. Let's get it popping. Let's get to it. It is do rag in the deer tag episode 46. I'm Drew Montana. We got Naeem Ali in the building. Mm -hmm. It's a special guest today. Something a little bit different from usual. Uh, The cryptozoologist, Bigfoot expert himself and author. Give it up for Ken Gerhard. How you doing, gentlemen? Thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor to be here with you. This is awesome, man. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about before the show, um, we found you through Swamp People or found Missing in Alaska through Swamp People. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, right when we found it, we were like, dude, we got to talk to one of these guys. This show is awesome. (laughs) Thanks, Um, man. We had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I grew up in a swamp, so I guess that makes sense that Swamp People would be (laughs) an obvious connection there. But no, yeah, uh, thanks. I appreciate you watching. So what, um... Where did you grow up, first of all? Well, I grew up in um, southeast Texas, uh, about 50 mi- well, 15 miles from the Gulf, a place called Lake Jackson. Lake- and uh, it's very similar to like Louisiana and this, you know, all those southern states. It's like really you know, damp. And we got a lot of poisonous snakes and critters running around. And uh, so I kind of grew up liking all that, you know, just being outdoors and... Uh, collecting animals and things so hell yeah and what so what's the transition of that into uh liking animals into becoming an expert in strange phenomenons how does (laughs) that happen because i like animals as well (laughs) well thank well well cool obviously a lot of people ask me that um so all right so check it out first of all when they call when they call me an expert in strange phenomenon that's producer's choice right so I'm, I'm low on the totem pole. So I'm a cryptozoologist. That's really my specialty, which means I go out and look for evidence of unknown, unclassified animals. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I am interested in strange phenomenon. I have a lot of friends that do the ghost hunting thing. I have friends that are UFO investigators, and I find all that fascinating. I know a little bit about all those, but it's not really my specialty. So for the purpose of that series, Missing in Alaska, obviously most of the episodes were based on strange creatures, right? Which yeah. is kind of in my wheelhouse. But, uh, you know, they did have us do like, an, uh, we did an episode on UFOs and an eff- episode on ghosts or spirits. So, you know, we uh, went on conspiracy. So we mixed it up a little bit. But, uh, but I'm a cryptozoologist. And um, like I said, I grew up, you know, my first pet was like a little alligator. I, I collected snakes and salamanders. So... I loved animals, but I also, I also love monster movies. I grew up like in the mm. 70s and I liked all those old Godzilla movies and stuff. So when I found out about Bigfoot and cryptozoology, it was just like the perfect synthesis of those two things, creatures, mm. monsters, animals. And so I was just hooked from a young age. Uh, but what I tell people is that the, the great advantage I had really was my mother who, and this is appropriate on Mother's Day, we're recording this, but... Uh, Hello to all the mothers out there. We love you. Yeah, shout out to all the moms. We, 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 we need our moms. Uh, my mom was amazing. She was an adventurer, travel agent. She loved my interest in cryptozoology and all that. And she took me all over the world. So I've been to 26 different countries on almost every continent. And I mean, I've camped along the Amazon River. I've hiked through the Australian desert, you know, of uh, Africa, Asia. So whenever all those places when I was growing up a lot of them I was traveling to and I was kind of already researching like the different legends that were you know wherever we were there's always Mm. different in every culture there are different legendary creatures and monsters and things but when I was 15 years old uh, my family went to Loch Ness in Scotland and of course that's the home of the famous Loch Ness monster or Nessie and so even at, at 15 years old I was investigating Nessie with a little movie camera and interviewing people. And so it's just been a lifelong passion and interest. I never planned for it to be a career. Anyways, sorry for the rambling answer, but that's basically nah. how it all. No, you, no, you, you, you made me think of like 10 more questions. So, so uh, a cryptozoologist, 
could also be the same person that to find like a new species of ant or like a new type of fly or something like that. But the show rather focus on, you know, like um, basically these mysterious, you know, monsters or creatures that are legendary already. So the question I have for you then is if you if you could find one, like just one thing, like what's the main one thing that you want to find? Oh, man, if I was going to prove any of them were real, Naeem, I guess I'd have to say like Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. Sasquatch, because I mean, it's so human like or it seems so. I'm not saying it's human, but it right. seems so human like and it looks so much like us that I mean, it would just be like. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> it's like this, find him. It would just be this shattering thing, right? It would be a huge, it would be an entire paradigm shift in our reality where we suddenly sure. realize that we're sharing the planet with a giant, hairy relative, something that's, you know, earlier on our evolutionary tree or right. you know, a great ape or something that, you know, was right under our noses that we never knew was here. And uh, it would rewrite all of the science and anthropology books and, it, sure. it would definitely shock a lot of people. So that's, I guess I'd say that would be the, the most interesting. So yeah. I don't, I know you said you think Bigfoot's real or Sasquatch is real, um, but you've never seen one personally. Um, I think he's real too, but if he's not real, why don't we just make them real? You know what I'm saying? We have silverback gorillas. We have anabolic steroids. I say we load them up and put some football pads on some of them things and let them go. Why aren't there gorillas in in Washington right now or in Texas? I think they'd survive. Oh man, where are you guys living right now? We're in Pennsylvania. We could support some yeah. gorillas. Are, are you Steelers fans? Eagles fans? Eagles, baby. Eagles. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine Bigfoot playing left tackle on that offensive line? Exactly. Oh yeah, that'd be wild. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that'd be nuts. Yeah, that'd be nuts. Okay. Um. So I'm 90% convinced that Bigfoot exists. I've never seen one with my own eyes, and that's the scientific way to look at it. There's nothing in science that's 100%. So, you know, I'm, I'm convinced by all the evidence that I've looked at through the years. I've done field research all over the continent. I've interviewed hundreds of witnesses. I'm convinced I've heard them. I've heard vocalizations. I haven't seen them, but I've heard, heard these things. I found other evidence, footprints and stuff. So all of that together convinces me that they do exist. Um, you brought up an interesting point about we should just make them exist because I also thought about that from a cultural perspective. So the archetype of something like Bigfoot, whether it exists or not, has always been with us. If you yeah. go back in history and look at ancient you know, Native American traditions and different legends around the world, there have always been big, hairy, man-like giants, which either is, is proof that, it, that, that they do exist or it, it's proof that it's a cultural archetype that we've passed on, it's called a collective memory, something that we've passed on for right. thousands of generations, and it's part of who we are. And I think the reason that that, that that is, and that Bigfoot is so amazing to us, is it's almost like we're looking in a mirror at our wilder self, like where we came from, when we, at a time mm -hmm. when we were in harmony with nature, and you know, we were you know, kind of in a wilder, more bestial state. Right. And uh, so I think that's what we find really cool about Bigfoot is it reminds us of our, you know, where we came from in ancient, you know, tens mm -hmm. of thousands or millions of years ago. So, what did you think? So, if that's the case, would Bigfoot be considered like the missing link? Because I mean, something, there's something that has to be between the like normal apes and then human. So, it's got to be something uh, that's a little bit more intelligent than a gorilla and a little bit less intelligent than us, I would think. The crossover. Yeah. Yeah, you, man, you nailed it, Naeem. I mean, it's a transitional form. I, I, I don't, the whole concept of a missing link is an antiquated uh, view of anthropology. It used to be, we used to think in science that it was a linear thing from ape to, and there were all the, a few transitional mm -hmm. forms and then we were humans. But based on discoveries in recent decades, and there have been a lot of discoveries in paleoanthropology, different ancient fossils, we now know that it was a totally bushy human tree. It didn't, we didn't come in a straight line. We diverged from a common ancestor with apes oh, okay. about six or seven million years ago. And then there were all these offshoots that came out and they're, you know, but they were all basically like, a lot of them looked like Bigfoot. They were, you know, they walked upright. Mm. They were kind of halfway ape, halfway human in their appearance. Right. 
and covered in hair. So, I mean, we have things like Bigfoot in the fossil history. Most of them are very small. So that's the, the real mystery is, is could one have developed? And so if that's the case, then Bigfoot is something that is left over from the past that should have lived 100,000 years ago, but mm. there's still a small group of them hidden in the wilderness. That's the theory. So, ba so basically you're saying it's like, it's not like a, evolution doesn't work like a sniper's bullet, it works like a shotgun. Like it's just a spray <laughs> out of different types and then whichever the best one is ends up surviving. That's it, man. You just explained evolution, brother. That's it's, crazy. Uh, yeah, it's survival of the fittest, selective adaptation, but it, nature shoots all of these different variations out and whatever ones yeah. work best, stick around. Naeem is known for his great analogies. That was, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, all right, well, there was another episode of Missing in a Lab. I don't think – there wasn't a Sasquatch episode, was there? Yeah. There was yeah, something was similar. The hairy the, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, the hairy monkey man. I remember that one. Episode two. Okay. Um, the there was another one I watched. Uh, I want to say yesterday or the day before about the Kushtika. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Naeem, I don't know if I showed you this one. It's it's a otter that. Uh, can can you explain it better than I can? This one kind of confused me. It's a shapeshifter. Okay. So the name Kushtika comes from the Clinket people that live in Southeast Alaska. We had yeah. Tommy, who was on our team, is, is Clinkett. Um, the Kushtika is a shapeshifter, and it's like the name basically means otter man. So it's halfway between an ot otter, and they have a lot of otters in Alaska, obviously river mm -hmm. otters and uh, ocean otters. Um, and the story goes that, that the Kushtika is like almost like a, a shapeshifting spirit that lives in the wilderness, and it will try to trick people or beckon people, draw them into the wilderness by making the sound of a baby crying or looking like one of their, taking the form of someone they know and then leading mm -hmm. them out in the wilderness. And then it assimilates you or turns you into a kushtika for all eternity. What? So that's, that's the legend. That's the tradition. And uh, it's pretty creepy. Some people have tried to link it to Bigfoot. Maybe it's just an interpretation of not otter, but just a big hairy man-like thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Tommy told us that he had encountered one of them and it just looked like a messed up otter with human-like eyes. So, um, wow. So it's, it's pretty creepy stuff. It's not really true cryptozoology. It's kind of either cryptozoology and a bit of the kind of paranormal mixed in there, maybe. Right. Well, so well, what about, my bad. What about that's that? What um, want... No, go ahead. No, go ahead, Drew. No, you got right, well, that's, what, that's what I wanted to know about the, uh, that's why it's hard doing these on Zoom. But about the Kushtika, what's the process of how they turn a human into one of them? Is it like a bite? Um, that's a good question, man. I don't really, you know, basically the way it was explained, it was like once you were the Kushtika was with you, then you basically shapeshifted. But there was no additional, you know, having to bite you or, you know, I assume there's some kind of magic involved um but no that's that's an excellent question i don't remember uh of course it's been a few years you know since we filmed that but i don't right. remember a, a a specific methodology to convert you know it's just kind of like yeah once he's got you you know that's it you're acoustica too so naeem could be acoustica <laughs> this whole time and i wouldn't have known anything about it yeah i could be acoustica you could be a, we're all acousticas who knows man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is that the same thing yeah. as um what's that what's that farm in Wyoming that we had like some shape shift oh, thing? Oh yeah. The Kanye Skinwalker went. Ranch. Yeah, um, Skinwalker Ranch. Is Utah. that the same thing? Yep, Utah. Um yeah, they have the Navajo tribe there or, or in, in that area. They have these legends of, of what are known as skinwalkers. I don't remember the Navajo name, but you're not really supposed to say that anyways. It's like bad juju to even right. say the name. Um, you'll bring on all kinds of bad negative energy, but uh, yeah, similar because it, it's, it's almost a, a parallel, man, metaphor King Naeem. It's a, it's a parallel because you have, again, a human that turns into an animal, but it right. could be in Navajo. It could be any animal. It could be a coyote, bobcat, right. bear, you know, whatever, but it's usually like a shaman or a medicine man that has the special either magical spell or the, yeah 
there's an ointment or a fur you put on a fur. So there's always like a tradition or a, a ritual behind it. Right, right. Yeah, that's nuts. We got to go out there. I want to go out. I want to go to Skinwalker Ranch just to see, to see what's going on. You know, check it out for myself. I'm down. I'm always down for field trips. We can go get some Kushtikas, some Skinwalkers. <laughs> some, uh, actually, that <clears throat> this brings me to my next question. This is one that I want to find as well. Um, first of all, what, what pronouns do ice mermaids use? What pronouns? <laughs> yeah. You were in 2021 now, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, man. I got I'm you. Jo- I'm joking. <laughs> man. No, so I assume ice mermaids are females. Um, this, this might be a question that's out of your range. Um, I know dolphins have waterproof pussies so that, like, like, they have these valves so water can't get in there. They're different from human vaginas. Naeem, this is a serious question. My bad. Okay. What would a does an ice mermaid have one of those? Since I assume they could walk on land as well. Do um, they have a waterproof? Can they you, walk on land? Or do you they have like water? Wiggle up on the shore. What, what do you mean? Do they? They couldn't. Well, I mean, most of the mermaid traditions around the world, it's usually like you know half human female from the waist up and then mm-hmm. from the waist down it's a a fish basically right that, those that's the interpretation that yeah but the i know the ones on the show they said snatched humans they oh that's they right they did humans they yeah. had uh, they had arms or claws you know yeah and so i assume they had man i i I don't know, Drew. That's a great question. I can't I, honestly. I can't speak intelligently about the genitalia of Alaskan ice mermaids. Ice mermaid. Okay. I'm gonna have to do some homework and get back to you. Hey, Amen. I'm always but, available. But <laughs> okay, I'll I'll spin this in another direction for you. One of the theories. Have you ever heard of the sea serpent? It's like yeah, a, I heard of it's out in the serpent. ocean. It's like a big snake-like monstrous animal that mm-hmm. comes out of the ocean. It's been reported for centuries all over the world. There's a theory that some of sea serpent sightings could be based on whale penises. Because if you've ever oh. gone online and look at a picture of a, of a huge, like a sperm whale penis coming, because they do this thing where they roll on their back and stick their penis out of the water. Damn. It looks like a big, giant monster. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Look it up. I'm not making that up. So. Hey, we could we could share the screen right now and find it. <laughs> yeah, time. yo, look, yeah, put that up, Drew. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> So whales just out here showing dick, and then people think that it's a, a damn ice, a damn water snake. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's snake. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they do that exactly. It's, that's all I know. I've seen the pictures, and they're pretty pretty wild. Yeah, they try to let it get some air. Sometimes you gotta just <laughs> you gotta just let it get some air. Sometimes, <laughs> damn. So do mermaids have lungs or gills? Um. That's another good question. I mean, if they have a human torso, I would think they would have lungs. Yeah. Um, I don't, I've never seen any like pictures or interpretations of them with gills. Usually they have right. mouths and, and noses. So, um, but maybe, I don't know anyone that's seen, seen a mermaid up super up close either. They're, those those uh, reports are kind of rare, so. Well, I saw a picture. I don't know if you saw it. It was a picture of somebody that some, I forget who released it, but it was somebody in like a submarine or something, and they released this picture maybe about two years ago, probably like 2019, 2018, and it was this thing that looked like a, it kind of looked like a, it looked like a, like you know how they draw aliens with like the big black eyes, and mm-hmm. then it had like bottom like a mermaid, but then it also had like tentacles like an octopus. Wow. And supposedly this was a real picture of something that they saw deep in the ocean. So I always assumed that mermaids probably looked like that. They probably looked like an alien mixed with like a fish. If there's a, if they exist, there's a strong chance that they look, you know, like nothing that we've ever imagined. I'm sure that's, that's yeah. possible. Like I said, <laughs> most people have seen them, you know, fleeting glimpses from far away. Right. But, uh, Cause I would assume they wouldn't have eyes like us because you wouldn't need eyes like this to be able to focus in the same type of way. Like you wouldn't need eyes that could capture this much light. You see what I'm saying? So I figured if they were real, they probably would have big black eyes. Or, 
mm-hmm. something that doesn't capture as much light as you know as we do. Well, yeah, that, that that works in two ways in evolution. And I'm not a marine biologist per se, but some things that live in the darkness, like cave fish, don't have eyes. But then a lot of really deep sea creatures have huge freaking eyes because they need That's true. they need that. Like, uh, look at the giant squid, Architeuthis. Yeah. It's got like an eye as big as a dinner plate. It's the largest eye in the animal kingdom. And it's because it lives at these great depths. And it, I guess whatever little light that it can right, you know, right. pull in with that big eye disc. But um, is, Which one of the – is that one like one of the more – not absurd, but like is the ice mermaid one that you're like, all right, come on, guys, what are we doing here? Uh, you know, a little bit, but I'll, I'll tell you – you know, based on the physical description of a mermaid, yeah, it doesn't seem scientifically probable that something like that could evolve. Um, but I always, one of the things that cryptozoology is based around is folklore and native tradition. And we try not to be disrespectful and take that stuff lightly because a mm-hmm. lot of animals that have been discovered in recent centuries by Western scientists were actually known to native people. They, oh yeah, we knew those were there. You know, it's not a big discovery. To, it's maybe a discovery for you, but I knew it was right, there. Right. So, um, and plus the oceans are so deep. I mean, you know, they're 12,000 feet deep on average. They cover like 71% of the earth's surface. And I mean, there's, most scientists will tell you, man, we, we don't, we know very little about what's really down there deep in the ocean, you know, in those, so. Yeah. Anything's no, yeah, can you can you imagine the first time somebody saw a whale? Like the first time somebody, I know they almost had a heart attack. The first time somebody saw a whale, yo, yeah. some shit that's that big that's his, coming from underwater. His name was Jonah, and it ate him, dude. <laughs> if you've read the tales, um, I don't, I don't discredit the ice mermaid, man. I think it was either a giant seahorse or possibly an alien. I know aliens live underwater. They could, like you know. Anything's possible down there. So, um, For sure. But the name was Qua- the the native name is Kualu Pollock, and uh, that's what they call them there. And I don't know if that's Clinket. There's a couple other uh, nations right there, but um, but yeah, there have been mm. sightings there off the coast of Alaska, no doubt. Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! You ever seen a? Um... You ever seen a platypus in person? Them motherfuckers, you was no way you would think that shit was real. A damn, they got a beak like a duck, but then it got fur, and then it got that flat ass tail. There's no way I would think a platypus was a real animal. That looked like God just was fucking scrambling shit together. <laughs> that's actually, man, that's, uh, Naeem, that's a, um, a famous story in the field of cryptozoology, and we use that as a another metaphor or, or analogy, I guess, because when the first platypus was brought back to Europe from Australia in the mid 19th century, no one believed that shit was real. I mean, right. they, were look, they were looking at it. Like you said, they were like, someone else, no, someone put that together. And then they <laughs> right. started to study it and they figured out, man, you know, so it's, it's crazy. But um, you know, that there's more evidence of evolution for you too, because you have basically a, the most primitive mammals or monotremes like the platypus that lays eggs it's mm. got a beak like a bird, and it's got venom, too, venomous spikes. What? So I didn't like, know that. Yeah, and it's got a very low body temperature, like not as most mammals have a higher body temperature, but, but the platypus has like a, you know, closer to a reptile type of something. Mean, so, it, it, you know, it's, it's one of those branches on the evolutionary tree that just shot off and, it, you know. What's that? That just sound like a Pokemon. For sure. <laughs> That's number 152. What's a platypus <laughs> eat? What are they? Where are they? I don't know anything about them. Uh, they live in Australia, uh, mostly. <clears throat> and um, they, they eat, I think they eat, they're carnivores. I think they eat like fish and stuff. Right. I mean, they, they, they have a beak like a duck, so uh, that's called convergent evolution. So they'd probably eat the same thing ducks do, which would be like small crustaceans and fish. Mm. Maybe some mollusks. Yeah, I'm down to try and to try and order one. We'll see what they cost. Get one over here. I'll, I'll take one. I've always wanted a platypus. Um, let me see what else I had for you. Oh, this 
this one interested me too. The uh, the Thunderbird, mm. the Alaskan Thunderbird. Um, so they say it causes storms in Alaska. It helps cause thunderstorms. Does that mean that there there's Thunderbirds everywhere? Because I never knew how lightning happened in the first place. So that makes a lot more sense now. There are Native American traditions of so-called Thunderbirds all over North America. Right. From Alaska wow. to the Pacific Northwest, the, the, even there where you guys are on the East Coast, the Lakota called them the Wakanyan, um, Bimise, I think that's an Ojibwe word. Anyways, so, and in all of these different Native American, that, that's got to make you wonder, like all of these na Native cultures that were widely separated, you know, by huge distances have stories about these monstrous birds. And you're mm -hmm. right. The name Thunderbird implies that it is either causing bad weather or somehow associated with thunder and lightning. The beating of its wings causes the thunder and lightning shoots out of its eyes. That's one legend. Um, but what's interesting about Thunderbirds is that beyond those native legends, I have personally interviewed many dozens of eyewitnesses that swear they've seen these things in modern times. What? Giant birds with wingspans 15 to 20 feet across, dark feathers, a hooked beak. And, uh, you know, that's not anything that's recognized by modern science. So it's. Yeah, if you like last year, because yeah, I think it was during quarantine. So like last year, I don't know if you heard, but people were reporting seeing like pterodactyls and shit in Atlanta. Like they were saying they were seeing either huge birds or like huge bats flying around Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed some people from Georgia that have seen these, these pterodactyl looking things. At least yeah. a couple. And I, yeah, at least a couple I've interviewed. That's I crazy. Heard that. Yeah, yo, they down there seeing they, pterodactyls still out. They still out here. I believe that. They're probably the coolest dinosaur for sure, especially off land before time. <laughs> I just made that up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> okay. Yo, I got a question. So, uh, you ever see how, like, so they says a lot of times when people see Bigfoot, they also see, um, so, like, what's the correlation between, well, what do you think the correlation is between UFOs and Bigfoot? Or any of these, or honestly, any of these um, mysterious uh, animals. It's the same thing with Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are some weird cases like Skinwalker Ranch, and you guys have a place up there in Massachusetts called the Bridgewater Triangle. Yep. The Alaskan Triangle. There are these places where there seem to be these high concentrations of Bigfoot, UFOs, weird, other weird stuff going on, like you said, but... Uh, and I get to ask this question a lot. Um, but in terms of Bigfoot as a standalone phenomenon, if you look at all the evidence, and I've been reviewing it for like 40 some years, mm. and um, it really doesn't, the, most of the evidence doesn't really point to any kind of extraterrestrial or interdimensional okay. or weird, you know, like there, we have like 6,000 uh, eyewitness sightings that have been well documented now. And reading through those, Virtually, you know, 99% of those describe it crossed the road or it, right. was look, it was hiding behind a tree or it was drinking water. They're all like perfectly natural descriptions of an animal. Mm -hmm. Only about less than like 1%, maybe even one-tenth of 1% describe anything having to do with Bigfoot vanishing or telepathy or UFOs. Right, right. So people like to focus on that because they hear the stories and it kind of it touches us as humans. We really, we tend to like a lot of the like really weird crap, right? I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, the weird, oh, Bigfoot and a UFO. I mean, that, tell me about that, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like, it, I think that's one of the explanations why people are so interested in it. And also I think it's a, sociolo a sociological or psychological thing where humans tend to want to organize things. Mm -hmm. So if we have, you know, Bigfoot's a mystery, UFOs are a mystery, Let's just kind of lump those together and try to connect them somehow. It's just kind right, of a, right. I mean, that's that's just my opinion, but it seems to be like kind of a, a perspective thing. But who knows, man? Anything's possible. I mean, I know there have been some weird stories about 
Bigfoot with, you know, balls of light that, you know. Yeah, um, I heard about one of those. And that's something I'm hearing. We had that in Texas. There's this place where there's a lot of those ghost lights and Bigfoot kind of. Yeah. Same time, so. Well, you know what? We got this whole thing. This whole planet could just be some aliens experiment. For real, for real. This could just be like a damn, uh, like a Petri dish. You see what I'm saying? You could have had an alien came down, saw this rock with water on it, sprinkle some shit in the water. And next thing you know, you got microorganisms that evolve into amoebas and all types of shit. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm big into simulation theory, so that's kind of similar to what Naeem was saying. Somebody down here playing the damn Grand Theft Auto 8, and we just a part of it. <laughs> we still got Grand Theft Auto 5 on Earth, but once it, once it gets to 8, you'll be a part of the game. You'll see. You got to beat the game. I don't know what I'd be talking about. Dude, <laughs> Ken, this might be uh, – this is an um, unscripted question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I feel like most people that are in the um, Bigfoot and phenomenons like that are also huge stoners. Do you smoke weed, Ken? Um, man, I, I don't know. I, I, I might be violating some type of contractual ob- obligation okay. if I were to discuss anything. Nothing, Say no more. Nothing personal, man. I, okay. don't, I don't judge those who do. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that bit of perspective i can say you know it's perfect but, um yeah i'm under contract to different you know media organizations right now and i just don't know if they'd want me to oh, yeah no i understand that. <laughs> i hear that yeah i get that you got hey listen got to keep them contracts on the way yeah you, you know it Hell sucks yeah. like it has to be so complicated sometimes so many gray areas Right. But, uh, but I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this. I mean, I'll, this, this is basically a revelation right here. Before I was really heavy into the cryptozoology about 20 years ago, I was in a touring band. And uh, we, did, we toured all over the country. And we did like really heavy, you know, like a, <laughs> it's called industrial, like, like, you know, heavy synthetic. But, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. I played with a lot of bands like, you know, we opened for Motley Crue and... Oh, hell yeah. and, and a lot of the industrial bands that are out that so anyway so yeah you can imagine i did that for 20 years so i, I you know I, I experienced yeah, a lot of a craziness a lot a lot of cra- yeah. craziness and weirdness going on around me all the time so that was a, a past life but yeah yo let them know before you was out here tracking down rare monsters you was out here tracking down that rare puss on them groupies you see what i'm saying <laughs> out here getting it dog you got to do that sometimes, man. Sometimes you got to let the groupies come to you. Let them track you down. <laughs> is, is there more Bigfoots in music? Or, or is, I said Bigfoots. Is there more groupies in Bigfoot or music? <laughs> um, you know, there are groupies in cryptozoology. Uh, I have actually a lot of, uh, you know, I love all my fans, and I'm very appreciative of anyone that watches the show and supports my, re- uh, supports my research and, um, but I do have some missing in Alaska fans and uh, just general fans that are, you know, very com- communicative with me. And, um, you know, I, I feel bad that I, I'm so busy. I don't have time to respond to them as, as much as I can. But um, so there are definitely groupies in cryptozoology, but I don't think it would, I don't think it's quite to the level from what I remember of, of being in a band. It seems <laughs> like that was just, that was the P magnet, you know. That's why a lot of people got into it back in the day. So, oh well, hell yeah! I bet you those um, those cryptozoology groupies they wear a lot of turquoise, don't they? They wear a lot of <laughs> <laughs> they wear a lot of silver, <laughs> silver and turquoise. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so the the people that you did messing in Alaska with Tommy and Jax, um, yeah. you. Were you friends with them before, or did you meet them through the show? No, I'm, uh, we were all kind of thrown together. Uh, it was a spontaneous thing. Tommy was the first one they had chosen when they were pitching this, just so your listeners understand how a TV show works. You know, there's, there's a long process called the pitch, where they're, you know, they're trying to sell it to the network. Network's going to pay millions of dollars for it, so they got to like, really like it. And uh, they had found Tommy, and they thought he was a really interesting guy, which he is. Uh, Klingit Indian, incredibly gifted carver and artist, does, you know, carvings and totems and different things. And, 
grew up in Alaska and his father was a miss. His father went missing when he was young. So he wow. kind of has that missing, you know, uh, that, that tragedy in his, in his family. So they chose him first. And then um, they were talking to me and a couple of my colleagues, you know, cryptozoology is a small field. So we, so we all knew they were talking to us. Uh, one of my buddies was like, man, you can take it. I don't want to go up there and freeze my ass off. Or <laughs> he's, a, he's a Texas boy. Like, I ain't going up to Alaska for six months or whatever they want me to. So, um, so they, then they chose me and Jack's about the same time. And we had a, like a spontaneous kind of Skype call between the three of us just to kind of make introductions before we ever started filming. And uh, we kind of hit it off. And uh, when we got to Alaska, we didn't know this, but the, all the, the crew, the TV crew and the producers, everyone associated with the production had been instructed not to socialize with us, the talent mm -hmm. at all. So they kind of threw the three of us together. We were alone, you know, so we formed this... Yeah quick bond or friendship because it was always the three of us you know and uh going out and checking out the local bars in alaska or just kind of hanging out before we're you know before and after the, the shoot so um mm. so yeah we you know we, we, we and we always traveled the three of us traveled together in a pickup truck all, all over alaska while the crew were in other vehicles so uh so it was cool yeah we didn't know each other but we you know we had a lot in common and you know we all liked each other and we just had a good chemistry right Oh, uh, hell yeah. It's beautiful. I got so we, earlier we were talking about the the rare ice mermaids, right? But I was thinking like mm -hmm. yeah, so I was thinking like, you know, since like maybe since about 2001, um our United States government has been trying to hunt down the rare sand nigga. You know what I'm saying? They like the fucking bomb shit. <laughs> they like the fucking they like to get out here and fast certain times of the month. You see what I'm saying? So I wonder, have you ever ran into any of those in the wild? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to touch this. Um, <laughs> you can skip it. I'm, I'm just. I mean, I'm, I've traveled around the world, and I've, you know, I mean, I don't know. I've met a lot of different types of people, and I've also gone into the wild and seen a lot of interesting creatures and critters. So it's yeah. I'm just, I feel, I'm blessed for, for all that experience. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. I think, oh, I, one, I, you, no, go ahead. No, you know what? One time I saw a raccoon walking upright, like a damn, like a damn um, person. It, it yeah. was probably about three of them. They was walking across the street and all three of them was walking upright. I didn't know they could do that. Missing in Philadelphia coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> right. You want to hear something else crazy about raccoons? They have little whiskers on their hands, just like yeah. you know, on their faces, and cats and dogs have. They're called vibrissae. Right. They're sensory hairs. So when you see raccoons pick things up and like touch them and feel them, yeah. they can actually get all kinds of sensation from just handling things that we can't yeah. even imagine. Oh, they get high off it. <laughs> yeah. So they they love to play with things and use their little hands. That's crazy. Look, I've seen them do that. I always wonder, like, why are they rubbing shit so much? Like, that's what that makes sense. Have Damn. you have you ever heard of the Cardiff Giant? Yeah, I've heard of that. It's a famous I, story. I went to school with one of his ancestors, this kid Jeff West. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he was about six foot three in the third grade. It was unbelievable. Wow! How, I swear how, to God. How tall did he end up? Do you know? He died in the fifth grade. Oh, but sorry. yeah, he would he would have been the next one. I think I think he would have been the next ten footer. Wow. Oh hell yeah. yeah. They find, they, they, I heard they've been finding a lot of like um, giant skeletons and stuff. You hear those stories? Uh, the most famous one I'm familiar with actually happened in Alaska, and there was a there's a little island off the coast of Alaska. Um, Man, it'll, it'll come to me. But anyways, um, Shemya, Shemya Island. And oh. during World War II, supposedly, they were building an airstrip there because the Japanese were right there on the next island. And that was kind of like the, the, the war zone. So they're building this airstrip on this island, Shemya. And supposedly, they excavated these giant skeletons, these human skeletons mm -hmm. that were like 
freaking enormous with ancient I don't know if it was like Game of, Game of Thrones shit where they had like ancient swords and th- I don't, I don't right. remember but so the story goes and this this was all recounted by some of the the army veterans who'd worked on this airstrip um, the Smithsonian Institute came and took all of the the skeletons away and that's a recurring trope or theme in these giant skeleton yeah. stories that you hear that the Smithsonian Institute's got all of them in this collection and for whatever reason they don't want the rest of us to know about it but that's about as much as I know is that story from what? Alaska but I've heard I've heard similar stories from around the world yeah and my, and my thing is why would they hide that though like that's something like I feel like you can if we got to rewrite history then let's just start getting to it you know let's just get down to it it doesn't matter who was right and who was wrong but let's just start fixing it Dude, that's what the Pentagon's doing with these aliens, dude. They're gonna drop the knowledge. Oh yeah, I saw. Yeah, they about to they about to uh, come on the news and just tell everybody. They'll give us like a third of the the info. Yeah, well, there's a theory that they've been conditioning us ever since the '70s and all of these space alien movies for decades. They're just trying to get humans comfortable with that whole concept. Whether you're a fan of Star Wars or Star Trek or right whatever that just that you know and they've showed us bad scary aliens and they've showed us benign et type aliens and so mm-hmm. i think i think that's the bottom line is if if they do have that knowledge that they're just trying to get society to that level where we're comfortable we're like okay it's real now we're in a science fiction movie right i mean hell we already had this like science fiction type pandemic over the past year that none of yeah. us could have ever imagined I mean, yeah. I, was, I was telling my, I was, when the pandemic hit, I was on my way to the library to rent a copy of Soylent Green, the old Charlton Heston movie from the 70s. And I thought, man, I'm about to live Soylent Green. I don't need to rent the DVD. Mm-hmm. You know? And it, it, that came to pass. So anyways, I know, I know I'm kind of getting off topic, but um, I think the world is changing. And that's kind of what you were saying, you know, that yeah, it's going sure. to be changing. So. I think a lot of people wouldn't even care. I think if the if the government came out today or tomorrow and they were like, "Yo, UFOs are real. We've been in contact with aliens," the the mass majority of people are so caught up with their daily lives, they wouldn't care. They just it go in one ear out the other. Like, oh, okay, whatever. I think that's what they kind of already did. With like, they were like, "We'll release all this information." People were like, "All right, whatever." Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, Ooh. they're real. We know it. Um, this was my last question I had written for you. I know we're taking up some of your time here. Um, so I've, I found this out. Bigfoot's a herbivore, right? Omnivore. Or, uh, omnivore. Yeah, omnivore. He eats both. Everything. Um, mm-hmm. I know deer love chicken nuggets from Wendy's and people don't know that, but if you, you can lure a deer in with some Wendy's chicken nuggets. Have you ever thought about that for a Bigfoot? Chicken nuggets? Wendy's chicken nuggets. So you would recommend Wendy's over, say, like McDonald's chicken nuggets or Burger King? You say Wendy's mm. is the way to go? I, no. I, you guys don't have Chick-fil-A up there, right? Have no, we don't. Chick- Chick-fil-A nuggets? Yeah. Chick-fil-A got the best nuggets. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe Chick-fil-A would be the best one. <laughs> For people, <laughs> well, I, I think. Well, Drew said Wendy's. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> man, I hadn't thought about that. Um, I do one thing. I'm not one of those guys that does the calls. Like when I'm out looking for Bigfoot, I don't start trying to do the Bigfoot screen oh, yeah. or whatever. I'm not good at that. But I do one thing called that I call smell blasting. And when I'm deep in the wilderness camping out there at night where there's supposedly Bigfoot activity, I'll cook like a whole package of bacon at three in the morning. Mm-hmm. Let that smell of that, that bacon just, just billow out into the woods around me. And dude, I'll tell you what, you'll get every animal in the forest <laughs> <laughs> going to come, come check out the smell of that bacon. I don't know what it is, but you get owls and, you know, foxes, whatever, man. They're all coming in. And so I don't know. I haven't had a lot of Bigfoot activity doing that, but I, I just think that that's a good. But I, you know what? I, I'm willing to give the nuggets a try. That's a solid suggestion. And I think I'm going to go get some as soon as we finish this interview. I seen Drew do it. I seen him do it with a deer before. It works. It works with deer. I don't know about Bigfoot. Deer? Yeah. Deer treat spicy chicken nuggets like heroin. You got to see their face when they take a bite of a spicy chicken nugget. It's nothing better to them. Um, 
Well, no, this was real quick because you said about the calls. Um, why do people do that when they don't understand? It makes sense to make the sound, but if the animal makes the sound back at you, you don't know what they're saying, right? So they could tell you, we're not coming over there. We're about to attack. They could be saying, fuck you. They, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. I'm a smell blaster for sure. I, I agree with you 100%, which is another reason I don't do the call blasting is because we don't know their language. So right. like you said, they could be calling out, I'm going to come kick your ass. And then you call out, you don't know what you're saying. And you're saying, bring it on F right. you, you know? So, yeah. I mean, um, I think a lot of the reason that one of the main reasons that some investigators do that is it's called locating. So you basically just want to find out if there's even one in the area. Cause you, you know, right. there's no point in going out and spending hours in the woods if there's not even one around, but if you hear a vocalization, then you know, okay, well, we're within vicinity. Um, but I still don't, you know, I don't really see the logic behind it. I, I don't know if it's ever actually brought a Bigfoot in closer, you know, I don't, mm. I don't know if it works like that as a strategy. So. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Um, dude, that's all I had for you, man. Did, Nayan, did you have any other questions? Oh, not a question, but more so just uh, a thank you, you know, like, thanks for, thanks for, sure. for being on this path. We're like, you know, trying to find these rare animals and, because I like to, I, I always like to think like if somebody, if if I never saw a bear ever and somebody tried to describe one to me, I wouldn't believe it. I'd be like, no fucking way. It's a fucking eight to 10 foot tall animal that eats anything and fucking can run 60 miles an hour and sleeps for six months out there. Like I, it just sounds unbelievable. I just wanted to say, you know, like, thanks. Like, uh, you know, we really, we're really, are, we really are fans. We appreciate what you're doing. And, you know, one of these days, you're going to bring that big foot home. You see what I'm saying? You're going to bring that thing to the Smithsonian, like like everything else. Back to the crib. The world needs more Ken Gerhards, man. Thank, well, thank yes. you, Naeem, Andrew. I mean, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I feel very blessed to, to do what I do for a living. And, um, you know, I, I just enjoy it. And uh, my message to, to your listeners out there would be, you know, keep an open mind and, you know, explore your world. You know, it's, that's a quintessential element of the human condition is that we we're designed to learn and discover and explore and, and try to find things. So. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to plug for us real quick or like plug for the listeners? Um, um your well, Instagram you know, or my, you know, if people want to reach out to me, I've got a, a, a webpage, Ken I'm also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I've got a YouTube channel where I make short videos and all my books are available on amazon.com. So, uh, that, that's a, that's a critically acclaimed one there. I'm happy to say, but, uh, thank you for having me on guys. I really enjoyed it. I had some, some excellent discussion. Thank you, man. We appreciate hey, this. Course. Um, and yeah, we're waiting for the next missing in wherever series. We'll be tuned in. Fingers crossed. <laughs> all right. I'll man. be there. I'll be there. Hell yeah. <laughs> we'll be watching. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. All thanks, right, guys. Take care. Peace All out. All right, now. Um, all right, yeah, he got out of here. That was awesome. That was beautiful, dog. What? Yo, we, yo, listen, lately we've been dropping classics. Right. Like, we legit been dropping classics lately. Dude, I just, I just upgraded our Zoom package just because I was like, fuck it, we can't end this shit. Mid episode, I was like, nah. They say y'all yeah, ending in five. I said no, we not. <laughs> yeah, we needed that. Like, I'm about to get the. We about to. Uh, the the our our viewers about to get a, get a uh, behind the scenes view of how we live our weekends, Drew. And man, about to see how we live this show like. Well, you want me to just get on two K? <laughs> no, I'm about to I'm about to violate a car and go for a walk around DC, bro. What times? What times the show start? The show start at eight. Oh, look at this. Wait, how how I can flip the camera? Oh, look at this, dog. Look look at look at the telly I'm in. The goddamn Watergate, bro. Oh shit. Hey, dog. That's where um, that's where Tom Hanks was in that scene in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. it's where Richard Nixon got caught doing some foul shit. Whatever. I don't know what he did though. <laughs>
What do you think is the most foul thing that's happened in that hotel? Because it definitely wasn't some guy stealing some papers. Oh, hell no. What in here? Well, John F. Kennedy probably got fucking double toppy. He probably got his dick sucked by two women in this joint before. Dude, I heard Ken Gerhard fucked a Sasquatch in that same building. (laughs) Hey, yo. Yo, I can believe it. He looked like he fucked Sasquatch. Uh, chill. <laughs> chill, that's my man. <laughs> chill, that's my boy. <laughs> Yo. Dude, he was much cooler than I thought he'd be. I thought he was going to leave he after was. I asked him about Ice Mermaid pussy. And he was oh, down. Hell yeah. I thought he was out after uh, uh, when I said the same nigga shit. Yeah, yeah. I, did think he, I did think he was going to leave when you said... Uh, <laughs> when you asked about Ice Mermaid. <laughs> no, when you asked him about the sand, that made him very uncomfortable. <laughs> that well, was funny. He's he like, well, I tell you what, I met uh, I met all types of people. <laughs> <laughs> he should have just said next question. Right. I met all types of people. <laughs> Yo, he didn't want to fucking, he didn't want to say nothing racist. <laughs> So we walked yeah. him right into it. So, hell yeah, I met all types of people. That was fucking hilarious. Come on, with a valet ball. Oh, here you go. You think you work there? Yeah, yeah right. They like you looking at you. I thought you was gonna park the car. It's crazy, bro. Dude, yeah, dog. Who's all like on the show tonight? Border. Me, Scooter Wilkerson. Chanel Ali, and I don't know who else. That shit is going to be horrible. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Yeah. I'm playing. <laughs> Yo, Ryan said, Ryan said that uh, Mother's Day shows be hard sometimes. I think y'all will be all right. Chanel, Chanel's a good Mother's Day comic. Yeah, she's a good Mother's Day comic. I feel like any woman is a good Mother's Day comic. Chanel's a good comic in general. I feel like that was a degrading. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Chanel performs. Yeah, Chanel performs one day a year, but <laughs> right. Nah, okay, Chanel every funny Mother's day. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's gonna be a good show. It's gonna be. I think we all doing like 15, 20 too. No, you should have been at the at the trick yesterday. That one was popping. Yeah, yeah. Who's that one was popping? Who was all on that? Ryan J. Uh, Rat Boy, Jackson, the usual. Who else? Uh, it was some other Joan on there. She had big titty. Uh, something tequila. No, no, oh, no. Gina Hyena. Gina Hyena she had some knockers on her, bro. Yeah, I'm talking won. about. They said they said her fucking laughing at her joke. I'm sitting here thinking about motorboating. Like, damn. You she just me? she just bought those too. Those are new. Oh, she bought the tits? That's what I heard. She was on Kill Tony and said that. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, so she been on Kill, she was on Kill Tony before? Like a week ago, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So she's she starting to pop a little bit then. No, she was on a, a random bucket mic show. <laughs> oh, oh, she wasn't like the... Um, no, like no. The no. Get- oh, Fuck right, no. All right. No. All right, well, that makes sense. Damn. Well, yeah, she was funny, though. She was definitely funny. No, she's funny as shit. I like her. Um, I saw yeah. her at the Crick like two months ago. She's good. Yeah, she was definitely funny. I, I appreciate her comedy. It was some other boy in there from Ray. I forget his name, but me and him got to do Philly funny the same night. He said he said when he saw me yesterday, he got worried. He was like, damn. He like, he like, I ain't know who you was. Now I know who you are. I'm a little worried. Good. That means I he's did, scared. Bro. Get him the fuck yeah. out of here. Right. We can't handle we can't handle bite from Ray and when it's Philly's funniest. It's not Ray's no. funniest. No, I'm gonna tell the people that work at Helium the night of his his thing. He don't even he don't even go here. <laughs> he don't even go here. You said it like go. it's a school. Yeah, he don't go here. <laughs> he don't even go here, dog. <laughs> you gotta get him out of here. He don't go here. Facts. Same with Matt Pe- Matt Peoples. You funny. You don't live here. You gotta go. Matt Peoples. Oh, for sure. I'm telling. Same thing. Um, the same with see. all the Alabama folks. Yeah, I got to see all the addresses. You out of here. Yep. You out of here, right? I need boy. a year of residency. Right. Zach Travis, you out of here, dog. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all not about to win Philly funny from Alabama. Like, what is this? Also, anyone that's funnier than me, I'm going to find a flaw in your fucking, in your life. 
going to be a lot of people going down for sexual assault allegations in this next two weeks right. here. Right. If you funnier than me, I'm snitching. I'm going to tell your girlfriend that you're cheating on her. Momo, Momo and Sydney are gone. They're in jail. Uh, Dave Primiano, <laughs> jail. Matt Peoples, <laughs> jail. We're at all them boys. Yeah, dog. We out here snitching. You yep. Know May case him out jail. Here. Yep, get out of here, May. I'm gonna tell him make a rule so that no pregnant women is allowed to perform. So yeah, May, you gotta people. Yeah, that's two people. You can't have two people performing one set. That's wild. Jail. Yeah, that's prison. Come on, get out of here. Yep. Um what What's they, the move, hey, dog? What, for the show? Are we about to get out of here. We're about to wrap this shit up. Oh no! I don't, you talk, listen, I, you, you talking I'm on to your the ballet boy? Nah, yeah, he he letting some other people in right now. It's, I'm getting the black man treatment. See how long a black man got wait to get his car ballet, bro? You I could this? probably I could probably drive from Philly to DC and get my car ballet before you. <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> Look, you probably could, you could pull your bike up here next to my car, and he'd be like, "Oh, sir, do you don't want me to park this bike?" <laughs> <laughs> like it's a damn drive through. Hell yeah. Did you ever on, bro. you ever ride a bike through a drive through? No, I walked through one before though. Respect. I definitely walk I definitely walked up uh, it was a checker on Stanton on Stanton Avenue when I was in high school and I walked through the drive through because the line out front was too long. Yeah. No, I'm and always they, and they gave me my food. They they didn't even tell me I had to have a car. They 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 I yeah. ordered. They, they don't give a fuck, yeah. Yeah, they ain't give a fuck, dog. They get $7 an hour. They ain't going to tell you shit. <laughs> right. Dude, I used to walk through the Burger King drive through or ride my bike yeah. all the time. Thank you. Through the uh, Burger King drive through Yeah. Yeah, bro, you got to do that sometimes. Thank you. The move. Hey, dog. Sometimes you got to you gotta ride through the, you got to walk through the drive through or ride your bike through the drive through you know what I'm saying? Make sure I want to make sure my food good immediately. I don't gotta worry about no car, nothing. Hey, bro. You about to get in an elevator and shit? Yeah, y'all about to go upstairs. Yeah, yeah, we losing you. Um, let's wrap this up though. We'll be back. Right, we doing live episodes from now on, dog. Unless we get another expert in here. All live, Monday. Dude, Naib's plugs are hilarious when he's going to the elevator. Check his Instagram, Naib underscore Ali. I'm doing your plugs. And he gone. He got shows and shit. D-R-U underscore Montana. I got shows and shit. Shout out to Ken Gerhardt for coming on with us. Um... That's everything, y'all. Every Monday at Raven Lounge, 8 p.m. Gang.